Dorothy Thorpe, Dorothy Thorpe, Dorothy Thorpe, Dorothy Thorpe. Well, here I am in one of my favorite places in the thrift shop, the clear glass aisle, because so many people, I think, just run right through it without close examination. It doesn't really take a lot of close examination to recognize this. This is the keyhole pattern candlestick and one of the most recognizable patterns by Cambridge, which is called Rose Point. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of it out there. Now, I'm gonna buy these two single light candles because just a few days ago, uh, I found the double double light. Yeah, so I'm gonna group these with that. Now, I'll show you when I get them at home. more than I normally would, $7, but uh, you'll see what it looks like when I get it paired with the other pieces at home. And then there's some interesting things down in here to show you that I've already put in my cart. <clears throat> it's noisy in here, so I guess I'll have to show you when I get out to the front seat. Uh, but let's just keep looking a little bit here. Oh my word, what would you do with that thing? That's a monster. Uh, seems to me, well, here's a nice little, uh, crystal compote that's etched. No, that actually looks wheel cut. Yeah, rather than acid etched, I think that looks wheel, it's dirty. And it doesn't have a price tag. Ooh, I don't want to mess with that. Uh, let me get down here on the flow. Down on the flow, here's a pressed candy dish for $5. It's okay. Uh, I'm looking at that and trying to decide if that's the Anchor Hawking Wexford pattern. I'm familiar with Wexford in the uh, dinner, you know, glass tumblers and that kind of thing. Is that Wexford by Hawking? I don't think it. Well, well, I guess I'll find out. You'll tell me. Um, if, I, if I find another piece in here that is Wexford, and it's amazing that I can't, because you find Wexford all the time, uh, but it's pretty common. I mean, there was a lot of it made in the 60s. I don't know what this thing is, but it's, it's an old pressed glass type of a plate, $1.99. It's bound to be missing one of these little, oh, I think it's cracked right there. No, it's not. I don't know what this is. This looks old though. Are these like sheaves of wheat? I wonder if there's, oh, there has to be a point missing. No, they're all there. They're all there. I wonder if this is a really old piece. Oh, wait a minute, it has a, it has a, it has a K and a W. K-W, Karen Williams or K&W root beer. I'm not familiar with KW, KW, KW. Let me go see if I can figure out what KW is. All right, boo hoo hoo. I kind of thought it had the look of maybe late Victorian amber glass and boy was I fooled. The K&W does not stand for the lovely Karen Williams. I had never heard of Kemper Wheaton, but apparently the Kemples, Kemples, uh, married in 1945, started making glass. And uh, when Mr. Kemple was called up yonder, his widow sold the molds to Wheaton, the Wheaton, uh, historic, the Wheaton glass in Jersey. I should have known. I have a connection to that, and I'll tell you about that some other time. And Wheaton uh, produced glass, made these in the, in the 1970s. So, yep. It was either from the 1890s or the 1970s, and guess what, it's the 1970s. It's still a really pretty piece. I like it, and I think I'll just go ahead and keep it. 
probably be, would be like a nice centerpiece on a table during the uh, autumn season. It really is a pretty amber color, I think, and I like the pattern on there as well. It has the feel of old glass. So I didn't know it, but when you see a K over top of a W, that's what it stands for. Now, they haven't been making any of this since the late 70s, so that's the story on that piece. It's good to know and it's good to learn. Okay. I like that dumb little plate, but I don't know what I would do with it. Hmm. KW. Wonderful. Here is the big Duncan Miller uh, deviled egg plate and in the sandwich pattern. And the Duncan Miller glass is so much better. Uh, it's a much higher quality. Just look how that sparkles in the light. Uh, that's only $7. Now, if I buy this, I'm going to not be reselling it. Uh, yeah, I've kind of started a small Duncan Miller sandwich collection, believe it or not. And uh, and then, but I find that their original uh, uh, mold, their original production line was much better than the other companies. Yeah, that is really nice in the Cape Cod pattern. And there's a little, um, I think that's teardrop. Is that tear? Is that is that Duncan Miller teardrop? And I think that's Early American Press Cut by Anchor Hawking. Mmm, I think so. And then there's Iris in the clear. So that's the earlier stuff. We were uh, just talking about the Iris a few days ago. Uh so interesting i should probably go ahead and get this today but people ignore this glass over here and it usually it, can, it usually sits here until it goes half price it usually does i'll think about it i'll think about that i'll think about that oh look at this thing i love that fantastic okay you guys know what this is wonderful to find it it is Seven, oh, seven dollars. Now I've got the little shot glasses at home. Sometimes with this chrome piece here, there'll be cut out circles and the shot glasses will sit and they'll uh, be held in place. This particular model, they would just sit on this little circular piece here. And then of course you pump the top and your little, whatever cocktail, whatever uh, shot you want comes out of there. There's some writing on the bottom, I can't read it. Uh, but I'll go ahead and put this in my car. It's from the Art Deco era, and uh, you know these were popular in the 1930s and 40s. I looked around hoping that little cocktail glasses would be here, but I can't find them. Then for me to keep, I've got wooden cranberries on a string. I had this, oh, I don't know, 25 years ago, don't know what happened to it. So uh, this was only $2.99, and I'm going to keep this for uh, holiday decorating next year because it's, I really like these, and I don't know why I didn't keep the ones I had. Okay, I think that's going to be it. Some Pyrex down there, which is no big deal. I don't think there's anything else. So we'll take our little shot glass dispenser, liquor dispenser thing, and get out of here. Isn't the clear glass aisle so much fun and so challenging? <laughs> There's always something new to learn and I always have to go back and watch my videos and listen to myself because without a script, you're just going down the aisle. A lot of times I say, I say that I'm thinking something, but I say the wrong thing. So <clears throat> let's talk about, I'm going to show you some of the things that I got and we'll talk about what I didn't buy. I didn't buy this. I didn't buy this. Mm-hmm. It's lovely. But there's a million of them out there. The Wexford Anchor Hawking Candy Dish. There's a ton of them online. Don't make any money on it. It's not... I, I can't spend the time and the effort to buy and sell that piece. It's nice, though. Uh, the other piece I passed on was the Duncan Miller Teardrop. I see an awful lot of that. I like it, but that little, two, that little divided candy dish or relish dish is something that, again, um, you don't really make any money on that. So I said no to those two pieces. Ooh, I gotta get my handy wipes. Where are they? Ooh, you didn't see this. Nothing fancy about it, 
just a good old hard-working stout glass pitcher and I happen to like it a lot and I was thrilled when I turned it upside down and it is actually marked Hazel Atlas on the bottom it had that feel and look of the 1930s it's just a good old heavy kitchen utilitarian soda lime glass pitcher and I love it so we'll see about that uh, this was half price and I admired it the last time I was there I didn't try to look it up online. I have no idea. It's not Teardrop by Duncan Miller. It's not a good, uh, you know, Thousand Eye by Westmoreland. It's nothing like that. I think it's just some kind of generic. I really don't know who made it, uh, but I like it. I think it's fun. I think it's a great piece. It has that feel of the, the bubbly Art Deco era. So uh, I kind of just... I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Somebody out there has it because you told me that you did. Maybe you know what it is. See, I don't know. I mean, sometimes I just... Now, it seems like anytime anybody has glass that's got silver on it, everybody says, Dorothy Thorpe, Dorothy Thorpe. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to say Dorothy Thorpe because I don't know. Um, they're unmarked. It's not something I would <clears throat> normally buy, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and toss these up in the eBay store. They do have a classic. I really like the way uh, there seems to be more of the platinum or silver that goes from the top as it goes down to the glass a little bit, a little bit more than you normally see. <clears throat> they're a little more generous with it. And they're these little sort of, I guess, old fashions. Um, and this wasn't very expensive and it kind of has a neat neat mid-century it's a neat mid-century look i think somebody's gonna like those and yes i did take a look at this advertisement right here uh duncan and miller introduced a pattern and i can't remember they i know they i know it came out in 1921 i can remember that it was 1921 and when when it came out in 1921 they didn't call it sandwich it was something else lace fine lace american lace anyway it didn't take long they changed the name after a couple of years and by the mid 20s they were marketing this at, pattern as sandwich because it looked like it was reminiscent of old sandwich glass made in sandwich massachusetts out there on cape cod as soon as you cross the bridge one of the bridges go there tour it it's wonderful go to the glass museum i'm sorry to tell you that the beehive inn on 6a is no longer open i was screaming about that the last time somebody told me that it hasn't been open in a while but anyway you'll find another good eatery and that glass museum is wonderful. Uh, there were other companies, and I think I'm going to get this wrong, but you guys can look it up. I think Duncan Miller sold their molds. And was it Indiana or Tierra or somebody redid it? But then uh, Hawking had a sandwich pattern. But by far, the Duncan Miller is, be is better. Uh, and you not only from the clarity of the glass, but there's also when you look at what looks like um, three sheaves of wheat. I'm going to hold it up and show it to you um, with wings. Uh, there's a diamond holding them together and you'll see that I don't know if you can. Can you see that right there on the on this Duncan Miller deviled egg? It's a nice one. Uh, and I am putting together, this is what I do, I'm putting together sort of like a luncheon set in Duncan Miller. So did I need the deviled eggs? Everybody needs a deviled egg. You're sitting at home by yourself? Fix yourself a big old deviled egg plate. Do it right. Now look at this thing. Um, I have not looked it up. I don't care. I'll look it up later. Um, but it had an old feel to it, the glass. I thought it almost looked like something off of a blender. Now, the top of it says, let me get it to where I can see it. It says candle, 
warmer, design number, and then it says, uh, now I didn't see this in the store, I see it now. I did not see the word Silex. Now that's coffee. So this is a contraption to keep your Silex coffee pot warm. How about that? Yeah, now I've got to go and look and see how far back it goes. This has to be at least as old as I am. And I, I, I think it's a little bit older. And then on the bottom of it, it says part number CW. Wait a minute. Yeah. Bloomfield, Indiana, Incorporated, Chicago, USA. So Silex has been around, what, at least since the 1940s? So you put a candle down in there and you get a beautiful glow from your candle, almost like a, should I say it, fairy lamp. And then you put your coffee pot on that. So what did I pay for it? Oh, I paid $1.99. Yeah, so I don't know. I've never seen it. Have you? Now, I can't wait to do this. Ooh, this is, oh, this is gonna be great. Yeah. I like my dirt. I don't like other people's dirt. My dirt is clean. I know where my dirt comes from. Mm. I don't know where other people's dirt comes from. You know what I mean. You know exactly what I mean. Okay, I don't know. I'm gonna throw a couple more things in here, but I always seem to forget to say goodbye. And I don't even think I said hello. So hello, I'm glad you stopped by to see me today. I'm gonna throw a few more clips in here, but before I do, I'm gonna remember to say goodbye. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Thanks for watching. I got a live sale coming up next Monday night. Mm-hmm. Wait for the cat and wait for a few more video clips. Okay, so long for now, bye. Well, there she is. <laughs> And ain't it a beauty? Take a look at the bottom. Really nice to have these bun feet with these old original casters. Uh, I'm gonna have to, you know, once this is in place, I'm not gonna be wheeling it around, but it does it does help when you know when you get it in the house. I was able to take off two of the doors. The screws are all stripped on this one, so um, yeah. I like how the inside is paneled. And this is beautiful old quarter sawn oak, what people will generically refer to as tiger oak. It has its original finish, which just needs to be uh, cleaned and just a little bit of restoration, but I will not be stripping this piece of furniture at all. So there it is. Okay, and I can drive back that way. And then, um, I have help in Jersey once I get it there. I can get it uh, taken off the truck. But while I'm here uh, across the river in Pennsylvania, I might as well do some thrifting because I've got an entire back seat in that truck that I can fill up. Okay, let's go. Uh, not that I need any more books, but <laughs> let's go see what else we can find today. I can't wait to get this thing home. Okay, after safely getting the bookcase loaded in the back of the truck, there it is. I went back into the Goodwill store after I put the bookcase in the back of the truck and I bought a matching pair of two, that's a pair, of two light um, elegant depression glass candlesticks. And then I also bought a nice green uh, depression era candy dish. I don't know, this one I've never seen, oh this is filthy. Uh, but a really nice emerald green color. And uh, it's just clearly glass from the Depression era. and uh, But a nice piece, probably a nice piece made by uh, one of the nice glass companies of the 30s. And so now I will sanitize 
and then I will prioritize, which means I'm going to another thrift store. Did I tell you I was going to another thrift store after I have my Big Berry Adventure Tic Tacs? Breaking it wide open on a Friday morning in the old curiosity shop. Woohoo! Well, it's on the front porch and now I'm able to really take a look at it and um, assess the minor damage, which is very minor. The key is original finish. You see, if this were to be stripped, that beautiful old dark oak would just disappear. Now, I haven't cleaned it yet. Of course, as I said, I did take the doors off <clears throat> and I'll do the veneer repair on that one little spot, which is really not going to be that difficult. Yeah. So um, it's complete with uh, nine shelves, three for each section. And the shelves, of course, as you can see, are um, uh, pine on the back. And then uh, added to the front are these oak strips. Can you see the difference in the wood? Okay, there you go. This is oak grain, and then back here is pine. So um, the expensive oak you would see on the front. But who cares what this is because you have books on it. And it makes it lighter. It just makes the whole thing a lot lighter to move around. Yeah. So typical, the door, the screws on the doors uh, get loose. And then people go in and they start tightening them. And uh, then they get loose again. And then people go in and they put in larger screws. That's a no-no. And then you split the wood. Now, that's not bad there. Let me see if I can find you. Uh, there's a, well, at, really, it's on the doors um, where they have uh, done that kind of damage. So, I need to fix it. We've got one piece in the back that is split. This is just from age, uh, from different uh, shrinkages of the wood. Um, I can either leave that the way it is, or I can fix it. <clears throat> and, and likewise, the back has shrunk and separated a little bit from the bookcase. And that's just a matter of getting back there. You can see here, this all has to be repaired. Uh, and anyway, the, it's the original back. And this goes up against the wall, of course. So you, you fill it with books and I won't be moving it in again. So that's it, a uh, beautiful thing. Really excited about that. Now let's go do something else and I've got to get that Christmas tree down. I thought I would show you these light fixtures again. I uh, am not in my home, my basement ceiling. I wish my basement ceiling was that high, uh, but I'm in my mother's basement where I have things in storage and I wanted to show you some of the light fixtures that I can't use at my house. Now these all date to the 1930s this one here, and they're all uh, Art Deco. This one here has wonderful custard shades. And these uh, are, fan oh, this has got to be, I think, my favorite one right here. Uh, and I can't use it. I love this one as well. These are Macbeth Evans shades, yeah. And this has this added feature of these this is all original. Look at these glass. Um, these aren't glass. That's glass up there. But these are just beads that hang in this groove and sparkle when the lights are on. Okay. And this one is exciting as well. Uh, very Art Deco with the frozen waterfall, frozen fountain kind of design. Um, it's hard to see because I, I know you can't see very well and also wonderful glass shades. Now you say, why can't you use them in your house? Because I have eight foot ceilings. Mm-hmm. And you've got to have 10 foot ceilings. There's just no way at all you can use these with ceilings that are just plain old eight foot, unless you hang it over a dining room table. And I've already got 
uh, a 1920s fixture for my dining room table, as you well know. All right, now, let us, so I guess a state sale. Mm-hmm. And how do you like my new desk? It's a mahogany library table, which I'm going to be using as a desk. It's been in the basement. It's a little rough. Oh, and I bought two 1920s wooden candlesticks as well. A lovely piece, and it's right fresh from Grand Rapids, Michigan, where all the furniture, or a lot of the furniture came from. So, I now need to toss that in the back of my truck, refocus, refocus. Let's go put it in the truck. I love it. Oh, it was $20, $20. It's cold and windy out here. Let's get this wonderful table off the back of my truck and have a closer look. The nice thing is uh, the library table is not going to need to be refinished. It's a typical piece of furniture from the 1920s uh, and it is a mahogany veneer, of course, all over the top. And then there's the one drawer in the center. Library tables were popular from the Victorian era. They started to fall out of fashion in the 1930s when houses got smaller, but we didn't really need a big library to use a library table. They could be used in parlors or sitting rooms and whatnot. And there was usually a chair next to it. Um, obviously, as the name would suggest, reading. You would have books on here. It could also be used as a writing table. There's a drawer here for uh, to keep writing paper and such. And as I said, I'm going to actually be using that down in my basement because um, I'm setting up sort of my eBay packing and shipping area. And this would be a nice desk to use with a big old chair to do uh, wrapping of the eBay winnings. And it just happens to be a nice table. So $20 was a steal for that. I'm not going to work on it today. It's a little too chilly. I'm going to wait until the sun comes out. So uh, we will see this table again. But I am going to take those candlesticks home candle of uh, the wooden candlesticks home and get those cleaned up and ready. This is a great table. $20.